Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dan Coney here, and welcome back to the Overwatch World Cup Roundup 2019 Team Canada preview. So we are getting to the end of our previews ahead of this year's World Cup, and it's time to look at the team who comes in at number two in the rankings, Team Canada. They have a very rich history in the Overwatch World Cup. In 2016, they did fail to make it past group stages, but things were very different in the Overwatch scene back then, as you might imagine. 2017 is when things really started to pop off for Team Canada, as they easily made their way through their qualifying group and the playoffs to reach the knockout stages for the first time. Once there, they would put on a show knocking out Australia and Sweden before losing to South Korea in the final, but still picking themselves up a silver medal. In 2018, they were very close to replicating that success, making it through their qualifiers before knocking out France. They did come unstuck against a surprise package from last year that was China losing in the semi-final but they did pick up a bronze medal after beating the United Kingdom in the third place playoff. Can they go a bit further this year though? Let's take a look at the organisation for Canada this year, and again, as with most teams, they have expanded their backroom staff this year. Jane moves from he co-head coach in 2018 to general manager this year, Kaki will be their community leader, and Vortex will be their social media manager. The head coach role goes to Tickety, this year, who is currently assistant coach at Dallas Fuel alongside Jane and also United States head coach, Aero. That would really be a tasty encounter. Rinanthera returns this year as an assistant coach alongside Sword. Team Canada also have two analysts, Danny and Joe Meister. Joe Meister is an ex-Team Canada and Philadelphia Fusion player and could offer some good insight for Canada this year. This is the first and only time I get to say this, but Team Canada names an unchanged roster compared to last year. Yes, every single player is returning that featured in 2018. We will still go through them though. Starting off with the supports as always, we see Banny and Crimzo. Banny currently plays for the Houston Outlaws. We have already mentioned Houston during this series. They didn't have the best of years in 2019, but that was mainly due to organisational problems with Optic rather than the players in the roster. Banny will always be a solid pick for Team Canada. Alongside him we have Crimzo. He has been around the Overwatch Tier 2 scene for quite some time and currently plays for Team Envy. He has featured in every contender season since its rebrand in 2018 and most recently featured in the first ever Contenders Gauntlet where Team Envy lost to XL2. On to the tank line and this is where Team Canada gets spicy. In the off tank role we have Note who is currently at the Dallas Fuel. 2019 has been a quiet one for Note as the Dallas Fuel struggled this year, but he made a name for himself at his previous team, Boston Uprising, where he was famed for his great diva play. While at the Fuel, though, he's been able to show off a more varied hero roster, bringing out the Zarya and the Roadhog when needed. This can only be a good thing for Team Canada. A main tank then, but who else but the ex-pro turned streamer XQC, returning to the stage for what could be the last time. If you know the Overwatch scene, then you probably heard of XQC. And if you haven't, then where have you been? He rolled out for the Dallas Fuel in the inaugural Overwatch League season, but problems with discipline that we won't get into saw him continually fined by the league and eventually released by the Dallas Fuel to concentrate on streaming. He has been banned several times on live servers for various reasons, but has never stopped his passion for Overwatch. Currently he is signed to the academy team of the LA Gladiators, the Gladiators Legion, but has never and probably will never feature for them. He is pretty much inactive on the pro scene right now. He is instead turned to streaming and is partnered with esports organization Sentinels who run the LA Gladiators and also have the Fortnite World Champion signed to them as well. If you wanted to know that. The question I have here is, does XQC still have the knack? Can he keep up with the players who play week in week out for the top teams or has the variety streaming life taken it out of him? We shall see. Lastly, the DPS then. And as I said before, no changes. Shaw 4, Agilities and Mangachu all return for Team Canada this year. Shaw 4 currently plays for the LA Gladiators, but there are some rumours of a move for him before the start of the 2020 Overwatch League season. Shaw 4 has always been a very good DPS player, and I have never really found myself saying that he's never turned up for the LA Gladiators during his two years there so far. He is also the only player to have featured at every single World Cup for Canada. He truly is an OG. Mangachu is currently playing for the Toronto Defiant in the Overwatch League. They struggled this year, but Mangachu only came in halfway through the season, so it was difficult for him to make an impact, and we will get to have a real look at him in Owl next year. He has had spells previously at Revival, Mayhem Academy, and XL2 in North American Contenders. Lastly, we have Agilities. 
And this video couldn't have been timed worse for him, as currently he stands as the only player who is not officially signed to a team. He was let go from Overwatch League team LA Valiant last week after two years with them. He had an up and down time for the LA Valiant over the course of his tenure there, but he has always been at the very top of the Overwatch esports scene, especially when you go back to his time at Immortals, when they were winning Contender Season 0 and the Overwatch Winter Premier. So that is Team Canada then. It's definitely a mixed bag with the biggest question marks over XQC and Agilities, but I am sure they all really show up at Anaheim. They always do. I just don't know whether they can take it that one step further and finally get their hands on that elusive World Cup trophy. They are certainly a team I would expect to be in the last four and hunting for a medal though. Talking about the World Cup trophy, that brings us to the last team of this series and of course it is current and three times champions South Korea, the dominant force in Overwatch Esports. There have been a few close calls over the past few years but can anyone finally dethrone them? I'm not making any bets. We will take a look at our number one team next time though. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.